We begin tonight with breaking news out of Tupelo. Police are on scene conducting a death investigation on Meadow Drive in South Tupelo. Investigators say one person has died. Police are also responding to North Mississippi Medical Center for reports of a patient who arrived suffering from reported gunshot wounds. Now, at this time, the condition of that victim is unknown. The department says this investigation is in the very early stages. Now, of course, we'll continue to follow this developing story and bring you the latest details as they become available. Governor Tate Reeves is asking the Department of Corrections to begin shutting down Unit 29 at Parchman. That unit has been at the center of the recent violence we reported on this month. Courtney Ann Jackson is learning more about what the shutdown will involve and how one family is reacting. Hanifa Jones has lost both a brother and a nephew who were inmates in Unit 29. It's not a hopeful situation to me of closing 29 down. Shut the whole prison down. Shut it down. Jones is among the growing number of voices calling for more radical change. I'm fighting right now for justice for my brother and my nephew as well as other inmates. But guess what? I'll never get a chance to see my brother or my nephew again. Meanwhile, we're learning more about Unit 29. 980 inmates are currently being housed there. It's not just one building. Unit 29 is made up of 12 buildings. The governor says that there are a lot of logistics being considered. We have to ensure that we can safely and justly and quickly ship them to other facilities. Three Unit 29 buildings are already closed. Those inmates were moved to a private prison in Tallahatchie County, along with 20 others from other Parchman units. And one part of 29 is death row. Interim Commissioner Tommy Taylor says MDOC can't move those 40 inmates. That's where they're designated for death row, which that's done by statute, by the legislature. Uh, that's where they'll be. Now, if the legislature makes a change, then we'll look at that. But we're not moving into death row inmates anywhere other than where they are right now. For Jones, she thinks the rally cries have fueled the decision, but she thinks it's too little, too late. Don't just do enough to try to gain the public vote. Don't just do enough to try to shut us up because I will not go nowhere and I will not shut up. Today, Reeves referenced the possibility of using private prisons or regional jails to move some of the inmates. Some showers on radar this evening, some downpours here near Oxford, Water Valley, Coffeeville up here in uh, Yalabusha and Calhoun counties right here, Pittsburgh, Calhoun City. Also some downpours near Eupora and down towards Kilmichael in Montgomery County. And we've had some lighter showers back to the east too. Uh, these have been moving from southwest to northeast around here. In general, pretty light activity around here, but we still have some rain nonetheless. Temperatures are mild right now, currently around 50 degrees. The wind is calm and it's going to be a much milder night tonight with temperatures mainly in the 40s. Now for tomorrow, we should start out in the 40s. Highs will be somewhere in the 50s. We're thinking somewhere mid to upper 50s. Rain chances will be with us, but it's not going to be an all day rain. There will be some showers around. We'll have that full forecast coming up. The Baldwin Manufacturing Plant is adding 90 jobs and expanding to its production capacity with a $4 million investment. Our Ali Martin has more on the company and how the expansion is a sign of a dedicated workforce and strong economy. Since I was Governor Tate Reeves governor, made his first economic development announcement since taking Harris office at Intercourse Plant in Baldwin. The company has been able to invest $4.1 million and will create 90 additional jobs. Inacor makes memory foam products for the bedding industry, including the popular mattress in a box. The expansion will double Inacor's manufacturing capacity at one of its manufacturing lines. Also, another manufacturing line will be relocated into what was previously used as a distribution center. Baldwin Mayor Michael James says the expansion is great for the area, a sign of a strong economy, and is also an example of teamwork between state and city leaders. I've been uh, the mayor here since 09, and I can't tell you a project has took place without that team effort. It takes a team effort every time, and uh, there's people that will never get recognized as had part in this, but it takes every one of them to, to make something like this happen. The hiring process has already started for the 90 new positions, and the $4 million expansion will mean yet again another production capacity increase for Inacor's Baldwin facility. If you laid out mattresses end to end, uh, our production in, in 2018, those, those mattresses would stretch from, from Tupelo to Jackson. Uh, 
with the with the growth and expansion that we put in place, I mean, we're, we're looking at uh, enough mattresses to stretch from, from Tupelo, Mississippi to Amarillo, Texas. The expansion will be complete at Inacor by the middle of February. In Baldwin, Allie Martin, WCBI News. Once the 90 new employees are hired, Inacor will employ more than 540 people at the Baldwin plant. Well, the fate of the Yalabusha County Sheriff's race now rests in the outcome of, outcome of an upcoming special election. Mark Fulco and Luther Fulson are the candidates on the ballot. A judge ordered for a special election to take place for two precincts. Circuit Clerk Daryl Bernie says the special election was called because four absentee ballots were not properly filled out. Roughly 2,200 voters live in those two precincts. Bernie says they're going to add the totals from the general and special elections to determine the outcome. At this time, a date has not been set for the special election. And turning our attention over to weather. So Keith, who was nominated for tonight's forecast? We have a really cool dog tonight. Quentin. Let's check, check it them out. out. All right, this is Storm. I love Storm. I love the name. And Storm actually looks like my dog, Aurora Lily, when she was about a wee little pup a couple of years ago. Uh, Storm is looking ahead here. We've got temperatures in the 50s Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Showers possible tomorrow and Friday. Sandwiched in between a bit of a quiet day for Thursday. We'll talk about that, talk about how much rain we can expect, and also look ahead at the weekend next. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. All right, we've had some rain around here already this evening. Still a chance for some showers tonight and Wednesday. I think we're dry Thursday. We're going to throw in a chance for some showers Friday. Still a bit iffy on that. If we do see rain, uh, fairly light, it would appear. It would, it would appear easy for me to say, right? The weekend's looking pretty decent. Let's talk about the weekend. Look at this. Saturday, a mix of clouds and sun. Perhaps a lot of clouds in the morning giving way to some sun. Sunday, ideal here, maybe grilling weather. Temperatures in the upper 60s, the mid 60s there. Uh, temperatures right now around 50 degrees. That's a pretty popular number here across our region. Winona, though, down to 49. The wind is calm. I think we'll cool down into the 40s later tonight. And we will have a few more showers across our region here. Uh, this is our Alpha Insurance Camera Network in Columbus and Tupelo. You can see Durham's Pharmacy right there and Louisville, Mississippi. We've had a few raindrops around here. And let's just go right to the radar and show you what we do have on radar. Uh, some of this is not reaching the ground, but you go out to Eupora and you can see some of these heavier uh, downpours in the yellows and the reds between Ackerman and Kilmichael. Some rain right there, also north of Eupora. And farther north towards Water Valley and Oxford, yes, we do have some wet weather at this time. Uh, even more so uh, down towards southwestern Louisiana and eastern Texas. Uh, there have been a few lightning strikes down here. That's these... Uh, vertical lines, these big bright lines, but we don't really anticipate any thunderstorm activity around here tonight or tomorrow. Here's future cast and when you wake up at 7 o'clock and get ready for the morning commute, just be prepared. There will be some showers around temperatures in the 40s. It's not going to be a washout all day long, but there could be some rain. So if you have an umbrella, just be prepared here for a little bit of rain during the course of the day. A lot of the rain will tend to decrease in coverage as we go throughout the afternoon. And the clouds, though, those will be holding tough as we get into our Thursday. So we're going to go with more clouds than sun tomorrow, Thursday, and in the Friday, too, and even into the first half of Saturday. A rainfall potential with this first system, hmm, not a lot. Anywhere from a trace to perhaps a quarter of an inch, plus or minus here, with the first system moving on through. Uh, the more significant moisture to our south tomorrow, we are sandwiched in between on Thursday, but probably a lot of cloud cover around here. Another system comes on through the region on Friday. We're on the northern periphery of this, so lighter showers, heavier rain off to our southeast. Temperatures right now and for tonight down into the 40s. We're looking at 50s for tomorrow across our region and the twin states. You can see widespread 50s here in Mississippi and Alabama. Here's your AccuWeather 70 forecast and uh, not too many changes here for the next couple of days. Quentin, we're looking at mid to uh, maybe upper 50s, overnight lows into the 30s and 40s. Some showers tomorrow and Friday. Dry Thursday, probably dry Saturday. Sunday, the winter uh, of the the seven day, uh, mid to upper 60s, plenty of sunshine. We just can't dodge the rain, can we? That's the common theme of 2020 so uh, far. Almost 10 inches so far for this month, and uh, that's well above average. Mm -hmm. And yes, rain, rain, go away. I know that's right. Thank you so mm -hmm. much, Keith. The flu virus is hitting one Alabama community in a major way, so much so that they've canceled classes for the rest of the week. We'll have the details after the break. Welcome back. 
Wash, rinse, repeat. It sounds simple, but it could prevent you from getting sick. Hundreds of people from all across our viewing area are being impacted by the flu. The Lamar County School District announced today that it will close for the remainder of the week to clean and disinfect classrooms. Our Cash Matlock has more on how the school is handling the outbreak. We have a number of students that are out with the flu or strep or a combination of both. South Lamar Assistant Principal Josh Harper says the number of absentees is close to the hundreds. Roundabout, uh, almost there, yes. There's also a number of faculty and staff out. It's no surprise that the district has decided to close for the remainder of the week. It's okay to stay at home. The absences will be excused and the school work can be made up. The district's lead nurse, Michelle Crowley, says the schools tried to prevent this from becoming an issue earlier in the school year. In November, we had a company come and we offered flu shots for kids across the county. You know, so that was, you know, we had to get parent permission to do that. So we wanted to be proactive in the flu this year, you know, to try to help decrease the cases. But Lamar County isn't the only place experiencing an influenza outbreak. This map from the CDC shows which areas have flu activity. The brown Brown color shows areas where flu reports are widespread. We have antibacterial soap in all the restrooms, uh, hand sanitizer in the hallways. Uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're spraying everything down, disinfecting our cafeteria workers, or disinfecting throughout the day. And also, we're trying to teach people to keep their hands off the T-zone, which would be your eyes, your nose, and your mouth, because that's what, you know one of the ways you can spread. Crowley says if you or your child start to experience flu-like symptoms, get to the doctor quick. Get in with a health care provider, because the sooner you can get in, they can offer some uh, medications that might help lessen the signs and symptoms of the flu and help you kind of feel better. And if you already have the flu, there's certain guidelines for when it's safe to return to work or school. For at least 24 hours, fever-free without using any kind of, you know, fever reducers like Tylenol and stuff. That was our Cash Matlock reporting there. Now we also want to point out all South Lamar basketball games have been canceled this week. Well, here's a question for you. When using cleaning products to try and get rid of the germs that make you sick, do you follow all of the steps it says on the back of the label? If not, you may want to because it could actually help keep you from getting sick. Elena Lester is the associate professor for the nursing program at the Mississippi University for Women. She says people may skip a few steps when using these products, causing some of those germs to stay in place. I think usually is allowing it time to dry uh, is probably the most step that's missed. Uh, generally, and also soaking the surface, whether it's an aerosol or a wipe, you still generally have to get enough wipes to soak the surface itself and get it a good a wet texture on top. Once it's soaked, then you have to let it sit there. Lester also stresses the importance of washing your hands with soap and water before anything. But if you don't have access to that at the moment, an alcohol-based cleaner is recommended as an alternative. It's been serving up Cajun cuisine in Starkville for more than 40 years, but now a longtime eating spot is changing hands. Obie's owner, Don O'Bannon, is hanging up his apron after 43 years, and he's ready for retirement. O'Bannon completed the sale of his beloved restaurant today. He says he's worked hard throughout the years to create a place where local, locals and visitors can enjoy New Orleans-style cuisine. O'Bannon says he's, he's saying goodbye to the restaurant business, but it's a hello to a new beginning. I opened up, built this place. It started from scratch. Uh, it's, a, it's, a one, it's been a wonderful ride. Just I can't express to you. It's been great. It's in my blood. I love this business. A lot of men wouldn't do what I do for a living, but I love it. I'm looking, really looking forward to just uh, taking it easy for a while. I've worked hard all my life. Now that he's set to retire, O'Bannon plans to spend more time with his grandchildren and family. He sold the restaurant to Ayer Spencer. The Bulldogs pull off a win that hasn't happened since 2008. Call it a comeback. See the thrilling highlights next in sports. Sports with Tom Ebble. Mississippi State looking to bounce back after the weekend heartbreaker against Oklahoma. The Bulldogs trying to boost its NCAA tournament resume, taking on the Florida Gators. Bulldogs haven't won inside the O-Dome in six straight times. 
on the road in Gainesville. Gators come out ablaze. Noah Locke left open for three. It's good. Bulldogs down 16 in the first half. Game over, right? Wrong. Second half, Bulldogs go berserk. Four to pressing. MSU breaks it. Perry to water. Look out below. Thunder jam. Steve Spurrier, hey, his son is now with Mississippi State checking out the Bulldogs team. But look at Abdullah Du says, no soup for you. Bulldog on the break. Weatherspoon to Woodard. Air Robert with the tomahawk jam one more time. A highlight reel. Breaking out the game breaker in Gainesville. And Mississippi State taking control in the second half. Tyson Carter with that knockdown triple gives the Bulldogs the lead. And Florida just leaves Reggie Perry wide open on the wing. Knockdown triple. Bulldogs up by four and adding on to it. Weatherspoon to Robert Woodard. Onions. That's your dagger, ladies and gentlemen. Mississippi State down by 16. Comes all the way back to outscore Florida by 17 in the second half. Snap that winless streak in Gainesville with the 78. 71 win and mayhem did not stop there the score right now this game is actually in overtime right now between number 17 auburn and ole miss it is 76 72 auburn with 56 seconds left of extra basketball ole miss was up by 19 at the beginning of the second half they held auburn to its lowest scoring output in the first half all year long but then it was the snowball effect for the Rebels. Bree and Tyree fouled out with about five minutes left in the second half. Ole Miss couldn't buy a bucket. Auburn piecing together 8-0, 10-0 runs to come back in the ball game. Now it is 77-72. We'll have an update on Sunrise. And if you're not, if you're watching the game, it's over on ESPNU. If you'd like to see the end of that. Mississippi State freshman guard Aliyah Matharu named the conference's freshman of the week for back-to-back double-digit scoring performances and wins against Vanderbilt and Ole Miss. Matharu averaged 12 and a half points, two and a half boards, and two and a half steals coming off the bench for Mississippi State. Head coach Vic Schaefer says Matharu can be an instant bucket. She never met a shot she didn't like, and uh, sometimes we have to teach her shot selection and win. You know, she can get. A lot of her shots anytime she wants it, it's getting it when we want it and where we want it from. I, I love the kid. I just love her competitive spirit. I love how how she, you know, she doesn't have a bad day now. Uh, if she has a bad moment, it's after a game and she didn't get to play as much as she wanted to. And you got to love a person like that. you got to want to want a competitor. Playoff soccer underway. Starkville Yellow Jackets hosting the Clinton Arrows. Fast forward second half, 79th minutes. Miles Sims on the attack for Clinton. Put on all the moves before his shot is denied by Peyton Rogers. We go to extra soccer in extra time. Luke Bryant with the PK. After a Starkville foul in the box, he scores. Clinton takes a 1-0 lead. The Arrows add one more to wrap this one up. Darian Hoskins stays with the ball after the attempted tackle. Puts it in. Clinton scores twice in extra soccer. They get the win 2 0. Great season for the Jackets Soccer Club. Continuing with playoff action in New Hope. Lafayette taking on the Trojans. New Hope up 1 0 here, trying to add to it. Look at the move by Christian Juarez. Insane move. It ends up in Trey Parnell's possession. But check out the save from Lionel Escobedo. Still a 1 0 lead for New Hope, though. And later in the first half, the Trojans with the throw in. Parnell. Going to cross one into the box. Ends up being called a handball in there. So that's going to mean a PK for the Trojans. They turn to Ellis Clark. Automatic. Trojans take a 2-0 lead. Commodores would tie it up in the 58th minute. Game would go to overtime. New Hope wins in sudden death. Trojans advance with the 3-2 result. Some more soccer playoff results from tonight. In boys side, Tupelo wins 7-0 over South Haven. Oxford defeats Lewisburg, Lewisburg 5-0. Ripley defeats Caledonia 3-2. New Albany defeats Pontotoc 2-1. Madison St. Joseph defeats Winona 11-1. TCPS wins a barn burner over Senatobia in extra soccer 5-4. And then on the girls soccer side, Clinton defeats Starkville 1-0. Tupelo Defeats South Haven 4-0. Lewis Oxford scores late to defeat Lewisburg 1-0. Uh, 
Lafayette goes on the road to defeat Grenada 3-0. Caledonia defeats Corinth 2-0. Morville with an impressive 7-0 win over New Albany. And last but not least, Madison St. Joe's defeating Winona 7-0. For those of you interested at home, it is 77 all Ole Miss and Auburn mm. in overtime. Will we go to double OT? Will we all be here till midnight? We'll find out. But it's an insane game. It's over on ESPNU. What do you think this win would do for Ole Miss's resume? Oh, huge. It's a must win, in my opinion. Trying to get back in the thick of things of the SEC. Do you think if they win this, it'll increase their chances for going to the big dance in uh, March? Or you think they're still... It doesn't hurt. Got yeah, a lot of work to do. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. We'll have a last look at your forecast when we come back. If you miss your favorite soap operas today, don't worry. We'll be airing today's Young and the Restless and the Bold and the Beautiful starting at 1 a.m. The shows were interrupted when the president addressed the nation this morning. So set your DVRs. The shows will air late tonight starting at 1 o'clock. All right, a few more showers out there tomorrow as well. Any updates on the Ole Miss game, Evel? Time looks like we're going to double OT. There you go. Have a good night.